Hello and welcome back to Scale War Machines. This is the second part in a series of videos on Liang model accessories, and specifically their tools. To start off with, we'll be looking at their airbrush stencils. Now, I was really excited about these because I've never used them before. I've seen other modelers use them to good effect, particularly at my model club, so I was really excited with the possibilities of these accessories. They are really very, very simple, and the pictures say it all. Generally, you're going to need an airbrush, of course. And I started off with their paint crack reference because during the build of this Mustang, someone pointed out that theoretically the Super Snake variant had fiberglass panels rather than metal. So that was an exciting opportunity to try and replicate decaying fiberglass. So I grabbed a bunch of paints from Life Colors, particularly their leaking and stain set, and chose a selection of the stencils from Yang. I put the colours into my airbrush and started off with dark mould and just applied that over what I'd done previously with the paint crack stencils. This just created shadowing. I think the key to using these stencils is to combine freehand airbrushing with the use of the stencils themselves. Here you can see I just started with the weathering references and that created a mottled effect. Then I moved on to the streaking and wet and I was really excited about this and it went on really well on the model using a new Galeri airbrush which I'll do a video on. But I just placed them as you can see and just sprayed through freehand. It is worth being careful of overspray and perhaps doubling up your streaks but it was really effortless to do. Absolutely loved using it and I really found it quick as well. I'm not afraid to do streaks like this freehand but it just makes it that bit easier having a template you can spray through. Back to the more mottled weathering references then and I just applied a few patterns on the upper part of that fender or front wing. Again blending using freehand techniques. I already quite like that splattered mottled effect but I turned the airbrush down at the compressor to get a stippling effect over the top of that. So that's basically the dark mottled mould base. I then added a bit more green to the mix and started spraying that over the top part. Again, I think you can probably overdo it if you just use stencils, but if you use it as part of a layering technique, I think it's really effective. Here I am selecting more of the green references, and this will head towards a lighter green, one of my favourite colours. I'll put the reference on screen, but I use it all the time and I've been using it for several years. It's mould damp origin. It's got that kind of greeny, really vibrant green that you sometimes see when vehicles have been left under trees, for example. And that's the plan for this Mustang. It's a semi-barn find, semi-rural discovery vehicle that's been left sometimes in the sun, sometimes in the elements, sometimes under trees and so on. It's certainly really good fun to do and it should be quite spectacular when it's finished. What I like about these is I kept them all on their paper holder if you like, I didn't cut them out and was able just to rapidly build up a nice layering of different streaks and patches of mould and dark shadow. When you combine it with misted top coats and your own streaks you get a pleasing effect, you can see it here as the vehicle is developing. Now for the brick graver or brick engraver. I was quite excited about the possibility of this. I think this is a good idea. I'm really intrigued by the idea of sculpting buildings and diorama elements in foam. So I thought this had a lot of promise. And as you can see, you have to construct it yourself and it comes with a selection of blades, including spares. You cut out the 3D printed elements and then stack them. And the idea is that the blades sit in recesses. I would say though, the recesses are not deep enough the thicknesses of the blades so you get a sort of splayed effect as you'll see and they don't really sit perfectly and require a bit of fiddly lining up and perfecting but with a bit of patience it all comes together I can't help thinking that the better recessing of the blades would make the engraving which you're about to see a bit more easy anyway it comes with all the screw hardware and you assemble it like so and you've got some spares as I mentioned now this was a bit hit and miss for me. It took me a little while to work out how to do it. So you may find that this sequence doesn't quite add up. I used this black foam that I got on eBay specifically for modeling for carving. 
don't really know what it's called, but it holds detail relatively well. Now you can see the blades splaying a bit there, so it did take me a while to get the hang of the technique. But in the end I found using a ruler, lining everything up, creating an overlap and just going slowly, gave a result that was good enough for a road test of this tool. Clearly this is just a scrap piece of foam. If I was doing this for a proper building, I would take a lot more time. Now there is a part in the set for sculpting the vertical breaks in the brickwork, but that disappeared within minutes of being on the workbench. So I ended up using this wax carving tool just to further accentuate the lines that had been made with the engraver, create a bit more relief, a bit more variety. But certainly, I, I hate to think how long it would have taken me just using a ruler and a single blade, so it's certainly a time saver. And it started to come together really quite quickly. This bricklayer should probably reevaluate his career choices because there's no real continuity in the bricks, but it was just for the purposes of this demonstration. And there you can see the finished effect, which isn't bad at all for a quick job. In terms of covering the foam and preserving all that detail, I used a product that I'm quite fond of from Vallejo, which is called their White Stucco. It brushes on really well and just gives a good base for painting. I then used Life Colors stone references from their set and started picking out individual bricks and the lower courses of bricks I just left in white. As you'll see, I wanted a moldy effect on those as well. So I've got a bit of a mold thing going on in my modeling. Anyway, plenty of washes were applied, giving something like that. And then, of course, something you should be well familiar with now. The Liquid Pigments Shadow Stage. Again, greens in their dark brown slash black mixes were perfect to add shadows to the mortar. And it was then blended or removed with their remover, both with a brush and a paper towel. And that gave this effect, which I would imagine would work quite well next to a watercourse or something like that. I was really quite pleased with that for a quick bit of work. The potential there is massive and I really do look forward to carving more buildings and features in foam. This is the uh, work holder, model work holder plus, so slightly bigger for larger figurines and figures. There's no instructions, so I'm just kind of working out what's going on here quite sure where the magnet fits in okay that screws in to clamp your piece of work okay that's clever anyway take a look at it I will use this on an actual figure and I think that's the best way to review that I may not do that this episode but I think it's a good idea for painting but I look forward to using that in the past I've used this kind of holder and many people make their own but in a way the comfort of having something that sits in your hand a bit like a phone well, that makes a lot of sense. This is the basic Zimmerick tool. Oh, yes, you get a handle there. So in this, let's see, you get a 3D printed handle. You get the screw hardware, and it obviously screws together. And then you get a bunch of different sized 0 0.7, 0 0.5. Looks like you get some bushings. These are for your Zimmerick. And then for more complex shapes and angles that attaches into the back so we'll assemble this and the second set is an upgrade using the same tool it doesn't have the handle but you get all sorts of other sizes and patterns again this is a tool I think that warrants a dedicated video so I will be making one where I use the Revel 172nd scale King Tiger that I made recently and that shows the possibilities with very small scale models. However, just so this video has added value, I am going to show the basics of how you use this tool. So first of all, in terms of assembly, it's fairly straightforward. You just cut everything out of the 3D printed parts, assemble it using the screw, making sure that you put the dedicated single piece non roller part in at the back and then you just screw it together making sure that the roller can run with the bushing, don't screw it too tightly. And then you're good to go. It's a handy little size, it's certainly very convenient. 
To demonstrate how it actually works then, I use this King Tiger turret and the two-part putty epoxy sculpt. I really like this putty and it's great for this kind of work. You mix the two components together, blend them smooth and then you can roll them into a fine film which you can put on the side of the tank. I find there's no need to really obsess about getting it super thin. What I would recommend is using the epoxy sculpt safety solvent to keep the Zimrit roller tool clean and particularly the roller part so that it doesn't stick and peel up. But as you can see, a thin coat of epoxy sculpt, carefully applied, rolled thin and then rolled with the Zimrit tool can get quite good results. This isn't a perfect rendition of a Zimrit coating, it's quite approximative, but it quickly illustrates how effective the tool can be. A much better example of its usefulness is with the 172nd scale King Tiger. And that's why in that video, I'll make a proper 100% how-to guide using this tool with that particular model build. And it really was a very small subject to try and put Zimrit on. Anyway, that concludes this episode and review of the Yang model tools. I've certainly been really impressed. I particularly like the engraver and the Zimrit tool. I will definitely be using them. Overall, they're a high quality range of accessories and tools, and I really do have no hesitation in recommending them to you all. Thanks for watching and bye. See you next time. Subscribe for our latest videos.